morning, cowboys. Breakfast at Fishinese. Uh, last night was your turn to uh, go hog wild uh, all over me with your opinions on the cowboy's ineptitude. And uh, now I'll take my turn. Uh, we are uh, inviting you to use the QR code to get into the Fish Sports Network dot com store we're inviting you to subscribe to get your chance at the authentic and autographed emmett smith jersey thank you emmett and we're uh, inviting you to just sit back and enjoy participate if you will with your comments your questions and your criticisms uh, you can also jump into the brief fund that helps fuel our travels we are going to the nfl owners meeting next week in palm beach florida and so we invite you to come with us we will also be at the star as we always are uh, we'll hang out there today. Um, uh, questionable on Fish at Six tonight. I will keep you posted. I'm not sure. Uh, it might be date night. And uh, we've been we've been grinding pretty hard here. And so I think Marsha is owed uh, an hour of my valuable time. Um, not that what, the work we do here is exactly digging ditches. You know what I mean? It, it's not that strenuous, but uh, it's a lot of fun. But it is time consuming. And so uh, maybe Fish at Six tonight will be uh, St. Patrick's Day dinner date. Okay, here we go. Stephen Jones is to blame. No matter, no matter how you slice it, no matter how you ex, uh, excuse it, no matter how I explain it, and I can explain it and have. It's Stephen Jones's fault. If you go to CowboysSI.com in a moment, give me 15 minutes of your time and I will give you the Cowboys world. And 15 minutes from now, if you go to CowboysSI.com, oh, by the way, look, you'll see the story. Randy Gregory last night went to dinner in Denver with his uh, five-year-old daughter, Sophie, who looks just like him. <laughs> uh, there's no mistaking. That's a that, that's a Gregory girl right there. And uh, you go to you go to Elway's Steakhouse and you hang out with the general manager and a couple of members of the coaching staff and you have a good old time. And then Randy posted on Instagram. Uh, the abbreviated version is thank you, Broncos, for trusting me. He used the word believing in me. Same thing. And while this is clearly good for Randy meant as a sincere thank you to the Broncos for trusting me, it's also quite clearly a slap back at the star. Thanks a lot for not trusting me is what he's also saying. AD, big Cowboys fan. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Fish, and to all my Cowboy family. This does feel like a family here, and we're on the verge of 50,000 of us, which is uh, astounding to me. Uh, thank you, Danny Rocks. Thank you, God's Dozer. Thank you, Dave Delone. Lenny Love, Fish in the morning. Yeah. I've never looked more tired. Well, I have. <laughs> I've seen some of those videos. I know what you're talking about. The great Cowboy failure on Gregory. And then we'll get to the ensuing failures that all stacked up like dominoes yesterday uh, that are going to be very difficult to, as we, you know, we've used the phrase here, hey, you, you got a pothole in the street. Big deal. Uh, it is a big deal. You put some tar in it and then you don't have a pothole anymore. The NFL is running out of tar when it comes to ways where the Cowboys are going to find themselves $14 million worth of pass rush, or even $14 million worth of defense. Obviously, we will monitor. Maybe they'll shock you and find a way, but I'm having a tough time coming up with it, and I know you are too. In the final meetings with Gregory, and I don't know who, I don't know if everybody was physically in the room, but again, in this modern day, the in the room people. Good morning, Marsha. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, at, at some point, somehow, some way, Randy's side either found it objectionable or pretended to find it objectionable that that clause was in the contract. It didn't matter 
it, it matters to me because it's a matter of fact that it was that this same clause was in Randy's previous contract. This same clause is in virtually every cowboy contract. Why it's not in number four's contract, I do not know. I'll find out. That's a bad idea, too, by the way. Setting the setting the quarterback apart from everybody else. But the Joneses have a history of that. That's why Tony Romo and Candace get to go on the yacht. Oh, and bring Jason Witten and his wife, too. Joneses, you can't do that. You can't be friends. You can't have the Joneses be friends with Tony Romo in a way that draws a line between Romo and the other 52 guys. Oh, you can bring Witten, too. Okay, now it just draws a line between Romo and Witten and 51 other guys. And the minute that Terrell Owens is not invited to come on the yacht too is the minute that Terrell Owens says they've got a, their own little club over there. And he was never wrong about that. So having this clause in 52 guys' contract but not in one player's contract draws another line. It's ridiculous. And that's the Jones's fault. However, it got that way. Now, what if you took it out of Randy's contract and said, okay, fine. Well, two problems. Problem number one, now you'd have 51 other guys going, wait a minute. So Dak and Randy don't have it in their contract, but I do. That's not a good look. And might even be cause for, for agents to go storming back into the office saying, take it out of my contract too. What have you done to me? Also not a good look. Let's say Cowboy Player X, not Randy, not Dak, Cowboy Player X. We take it out of his contract. And by the way, the, the mention of fines in the contract is not standard across the NFL. Everybody doesn't have that, but it's standard in Cowboys contracts, including Randy's previous guaranteed money contract. That's a fact. I invite Peter Schaefer to show me otherwise because I've seen the contract and I've seen Randy's signature on it. What happened is Randy didn't read it the last time around. And this time, somehow he read it. And he said, wait a minute, what's that? At which point, Cowboys Nation wishes Peter Schaefer would have put his arm around Randy and said, don't worry about it. It's nothing. Because, because if I'm clean and sober, it is nothing. And Peter Schaefer could have said, the Cowboys have that in almost all their contracts, 99% of their contracts. And they've never, the fine part, they've never enforced the fine part. They've never done the fine part. Peter could have said all that. Randy could have accepted all that. And this would have been fine. But they didn't, and that's not their fault. Because it's not Peter Schaefer's job to get Randy signed with the Cowboys. It's Stephen Jones's job to get Randy signed with the Cowboys. And here's the kick in the Gortots to Stephen's dad. Stephen's dad believes that he's created a football family here. And Randy Gregory in particular, loyalty, trust, belief, brotherhood. Lenny Love, Uncle Fish Premium subscriber. You could be one too. You can see uh, everybody with their badges. Get you some. Jim Laws and the fellows will show you how. It's uh, pretty cool. They're, right now, last night, there's something in there that's kind of cool just for you. If you're a Uncle Fish Premium, Lenny Love, I'm having some coffee, learning from Mike Fisher about everything Cowboys. I'll do my best. It's a lot of pressure. What Jerry Jones found out that night, this isn't a family. It's a football team. The trust exists, but it doesn't go beyond football team. The belief exists, but it doesn't go beyond football team. The brotherhood exists, but it doesn't go beyond football team. It's just a football team. And I would tell you, knowing Jerry as I do, that he's, is he mad at that? He's disappointed that his grandson left the family. Because 
And, and when Jerry sees this comment today in my story on CowboysSI.com, where Randy's saying, thanks for not trusting me, Cowboys. Bleep you, kind of. Jerry's going to go, how, how did the Cowboys-Jones-Gregory relationship get to the point where we're not trusting each other? Jerry will be shocked by that. Forget about the clause. He's not shocked by the clause. He'll be shocked to learn that, in Randy's own words, the breakup was due to him feeling not trusted. And do you see, this is why I'm trying to not, like, I'm not trying to take a side here. I'm just giving the evidence. And the evidence leads me to say that ultimately it's Stephen's fault because if you haven't, if you think you forged a trust relationship with Randy Gregory and you haven't, then you've been fooling yourself for five years or maybe 25 years. It's not a brotherhood. It's not a family. It's 53 guys that are under contract together to do the same thing for one year, to row in the same direction, one year. And at the end of the year, contracts are up. 30% of the guys leave. Some guys, the Cowboys, the, owner, the Cowboys and every other team who are under contracts, say, get out of here. Other guys say, get me out of here. When Stephen Jones the other day said, I think our culture is good, he was talking about the front office and talking about the uh, paternity thing and the Dalrymple thing and Dan Snyder and all that, John Gruden, that's what we're talking about there. This is a different, a different part of culture. This ownership feels like it's close with its players. And this ownership just discovered that maybe, just maybe, it's fooling itself. The players like Jerry. But when, when, they, when they want to talk to their grandfather, they actually call their actual grandfather. Unless they want to talk about making money, then they call Jerry. Or unless they want to talk about circumventing the head coach, then they call Jerry. And that makes Jerry feel good. But he's not their first grandpa and he's not their second grandpa. And at best, he's their third grandpa and he's really their business grandpa. And that's that. Good morning, fish heads. So what do we do next? We being you, we being the Cowboys. Well, you better not go to Jerron Curse today and say, don't worry, trust us. Better not try that one. When you call Bobby Wagner again, and you will, you better not call him and say, don't worry, trust us. When you sit down with Dalton Schultz, which you, you can do proactively, Stephen, you don't have to wait till all the other tight ends get paid that set the market inevitably higher. Do it now while the getting's a little bit better. But when you do it, don't ask Dalton Schultz to trust you. Another thing we can do now before we start trying to name some names. And I will ask Stephen this. Tell me again why last August you announced that you would not, during the season, do contract negotiations with Gallup, Schultz, Randy in particular, and uh, Connor Williams, whoever. Why? Didn't the price, by, by waiting nine months, didn't the price go up? What could you have signed Randy, and, and we don't, we'll never know exactly. What could you have signed Randy Gregory for in last September? Five years and less than 70 million, I guarantee that. I guarantee you Dalton Schultz, Dalton Schultz last September never dreamed he was going to get $11 million a year. I'm going to suggest you could have gone to Dalton Schultz and said, we will give you 
six million dollars a year? And he might have said yes. But by waiting, he doubled his salary. Michael Gallup in September. Michael Gallup, not to, be, be, listen, because the trust is broken, let's go all take advantage of each other. Michael Gallup, the day he got hurt, boy, Michael, we're not going to see you for nine weeks because of that calf. But I'll tell you what, we still love you. Let's do some business. You could have got him for less than they got him for, is my suggestion. Curse is going to get paid a lot more now than he would have got paid had you gone to him in September and say, you know, this is working out pretty well for us. You're a pretty good third safety. We'd like to pay you like a really good third safety. Instead, by waiting, they're going to have to pay him like a really good first safety, maybe, in order to keep him. Why? Florida Castaway, I think the Randy Gregory thing is the tipping point for a lot of us diehard Cowboy fans. And you can choose to say, I didn't like Mike McCarthy's comments here, or I didn't like the handling of Zeke's knee, but th that's football stuff. Florida, I appreciate your thoughts. Not liking the comments of the head coach after a playoff loss is football stuff. Guys getting injured and what to do about it and playing time, football stuff. The Randy Gregory thing is not football stuff. This is unusual. Not the first time. In fact, in free agency, I think it's the fourth time. I think it's the fourth time in the history of free agency. Or at least big money free agency where a guy had an agreement and then undid his agreement the next day. It just almost never happens. Therefore, it's not football stuff. TJ, what are they doing with Lyle Collins? Uh, a reporter in New England says the Patriots are interested. You're going to have to find a way, however, to do this so it's structured as a post-June 1 move. If you do it before June 1 and don't designate it otherwise, you're going to eat $14 million of dead money to get rid of a good player. So orchestrate it somehow. And by the way, whether it's a cut or a trade, TJ, I mean, you're going to get a six round pick for it. So I wouldn't lose too much sleep over what, over, over what format they use to get rid of Lyle Collins, except for the June 1st thing. That's all that matters. Want to get rid of him? You want a six round pick? Sure. You'd rather have a six round pick than nothing. Hey, listen, the Cowboys are going to dominate this year in fifth round picks. I got a million of them. It's going to be an exciting day three. They'll, they'll have four for four picks in that round, right? Michael Sullivan, Uncle Fish Premium. I hope the Cowboys make a big splash. If I'm you, and I appreciate the splash concept, if I'm you, I just, I, I, I hope the Cowboys do something right. I don't need names that everybody's heard of, although that's fun. I need it done right. Charlie says there's no splash to make. I don't know that that's true, but the, the pool doesn't have much more water in it. It's hard to splash in a pool where there's only droplets. Cowboys, the numbers that you're thinking on Bobby Wagner, jack them up. Get it done. Uh, because of because you want to gain some faith in Cowboys Nation? I don't know. That's probably not the best way of doing business. Cowboys, have you ever looked at Clowney? Who obviously has this tremendous ability and doesn't necessarily always fulfill it, but you ever even looked at it? Hunter in Minnesota. Pricey, are you looking at it? Jerry Sly, Uncle Fish Premium subscriber. Yes, Fish, you can take Fish at six off tonight. It's not like the Cowboys are going to do anything. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Chris Graham, Stephen is goofing up America's team. <clears throat> Chandler Jones, Pete is gone. Off to the Raiders. They're probably going to sign Dorrance Armstrong. And, and when they do, I will immediately do a two minute video analyzing it live from the star, most likely. And that that's fine. Dorrance Armstrong is a, is a good NFL player. But you can't pretend that Dorrance Armstrong is, has the talent of a clowny or a Smith or a Chandler Jones or a Von Miller or a Randy Gregory. I think someone said, well, now Dorrance Armstrong had just as many blah, blah, blahs as right. I know, I know. You're just talking about talent. Not the same. Terrell Basham can play in the NFL and, and will. But he's not Chandler Jones. So Tank Lawrence on one side, Michael Parsons at linebacker. There is a vacancy at the other defensive end spot. And... I already know this. You, if they sign Armstrong and say, I, I hope for their own sake, they sign Dorrance Armstrong and say, we really believe in him as a rotational defense, as, as a very athletic rotational defensive end. That's what I want them to say. Not this other crap. Howard Schiffer, $5 pitch in. Fish, I'm starting to feel like the Cowboys are tanking. It just goes against every single fiber in their being. By the way, when we talk about they're tanking so they can dump, let me think about, let's go through this. They're tanking so they can justify trading, I mean, firing McCarthy. If you felt that way, why don't you just fire McCarthy now? Well, because of Sean Payton. What about Dan Quinn? You sure, are, are we sure that they would hire that, that Sean Payton would get hired over Dan Quinn? I'm not. Maybe. I think they would. I think if Mike McCarthy somehow gets fired this year, that Dan Quinn and Sean Payton would be the two leading candidates for it. So if you feel that way, if the Cowboys really feel that way about Mike McCarthy, just fire him now. Why, why put Dan Quinn in charge now? So I, I don't. I, I understand the theory, and I respect those people that have done detailed breakdowns of the theory, but I just don't see it. Smiley Rizzo, $5 pitch into the brief fund. I think we need the return of Wildcat Jerry. Uh, and Rizzo mentions the idea that I think what you're saying, Smiley, is money not spent this year on the cap, under the cap, moves to next year. I will crucify the Cowboys if they take this $14 million and put it in their, not Jerry's pocket or Steven's pocket, not because they're cheap, that's not how it works. They put it in their salary cap pocket for 2023. You can't forfeit years in the NFL because you don't know that this isn't the year. Good thing the Bengals didn't forfeit this year, huh? Don't forfeit years. There's circumstances where tanking is appropriate. And in fact, there's one. And it would have to be the confluence of two things. One, my team is already established as bad, which isn't the Cowboys. And two, next year's draft has Andrew Luck in it. The Colts did it, if you remember. After Peyton Manning got a serious injury and after they already started the season like 0-4, that's when they started saying, okay, we're not, we're not good. We're not going anywhere. We don't have Peyton and Andrew Luck's in that next draft, if I'm recalling properly. That's the only circumstance for me where tanking in the NFL is sensible. 
But to sit here today and say the Cowboys are so bad, they might as well give up the season after having gone 12 and 12 and five. I don't find that to be logical. And I'm quite sure that the Joneses don't either. They are not trying to goof this up on purpose. They are just goofing it up. My understanding is Honey Badger is signing with the Raiders. If you guys have different information, you let me know. My understanding is that Chandler Jones is signing with the Raiders. Same thing. By the way, is that irritating to you? Yes. The Raiders just signed arguably the best defensive end available and the best safety. Oh, and Jacksonville just signed the best guard and this and this and this. And we're, of course, aware of what the Rams were trying to do with Von Miller. It didn't work as, as the, he goes to the Bills, but they'll, they'll keep doing their thing. Jonathan Trotter, if they keep the $14 million and as, as a carryover for next year, I bet you Tank Lawrence will be spitting feathers. Me too. I appreciate Tank Lawrence visiting with us yesterday. We had a good visit. We did a great story uh, thanks to him on CowboysSI.com. And he's happy where he was. This was pre-Randy. And he's happy. But we sat down in negotiations and I made sacrifices. We all made, I made sacrifices. I didn't make sacrifices so you guys could be great someday. I want to be great now. Simon Gar is a $5 pitch in into the refund. I don't see tanking in Jerry Jones. He's all about winning and winning now. I believe that. Uh, my, my knowledge of him tells me that. But again, I understand the skepticism. The theme of the show today, and we will be with you throughout the day. Thank you for subscribing and, uh, and telling your cowboy love and friends what we do here. I see a whole bunch of people are here today. Thank you for that. The theme of the day is trust. Randy didn't feel it from the Cowboys. That's their fault. And now you don't have it for the Cowboys. And that's their fault too. Fish out.